Um, this is Admiral <coughs> Carl Clausen, and today I'm here with uh, Connie Penner at the Cruz Roja Mexicana here in uh, Campo 101, and uh, she's going to tell us a little bit about um, her work with uh, Cruz Roja. Welcome. Thanks for participating. Um, so can you briefly introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Connie Penner, and I work here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so describe your background a little bit and your connection to the, the Campos Manonitas here in Chihuahua. Okay, well, I grew up in, in Coes. It's about 30 minutes north of here. That's where I grew up. And, <coughs> excuse me, we would always come to town to go, mm -hmm. to go shopping. So I hardly knew any people here. But, um, Excuse me, can I drink some water oh, first? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so you were saying you, you grew up in Coes? Yes, I grew up in Coes. So I did not know this place very well. We mm -hmm. just always called it DARPA, which yeah. means like towns, little towns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we would go shopping in Cuauhtémoc and here mm -hmm. along Corredor. Yeah. That's about how I got to, knew, got to know it mm -hmm. and when I entered the Cruz Roja here. So yeah. then I had to get to know it very well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so what did daily life uh, look like for you and your family when you were growing up in Hoyas? We have a farm, uh, not a large one. I have some cows, some land. So I went to school almost yeah. every day. Yeah. But besides that, my dad would yeah, be working yeah. on the farm. Yeah. And I really enjoyed that. I was always a tom, tom, tomboy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Helping yeah. my dad out a lot. Yeah. Um, and so... Uh, when you were growing up in Hawaii, is what kind of interactions between um, Mennonites and people who weren't Mennonite, um, what was considered normal? Um, a lot of us had workers that were Mexicans. Mm -hmm. And also, let's say if we would go to the doctor, to the dentist, anywhere mm -hmm. like that, it would always be Mexicans. Mm -hmm. But especially where I first got to know Mexicans mm -hmm. would be workers. Like my yeah. uncles, my dad would have workers on the field yeah. or in the stores. Yeah, That was considered normal. But yeah. besides that, we didn't like we didn't go to church with them. Mm -hmm. They were not in church. Yeah, yeah. that's about. That's and then school as well was, was strictly all, Mennonite. Yeah, that was strictly Mennonite. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so your family's interactions um, were those typical for where you were growing up, where you were living. Yeah, yeah. yeah there were some people mm -hmm. that had more interactions with Mennonites, Men uh, Mexican. Sorry, mm -hmm. let's say somebody would marry a, a Mexican. Mm -hmm. That would, um, my parents are not as, as held back, or mm -hmm. like the whole community is not as held back as some, some colonies around here. Mm -hmm. But still, they would always be judged or, or kind of looked down upon, like, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, oh, he yeah. married a Max, or like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, and so, what's the, the first um, interaction with somebody who is a Mennonite that you can remember? It's probably giving Bible school classes to no, no wait. When I was f six years old, seven mm -hmm. years old, we moved to Veracruz for oh, a year. Okay, so yeah. we were like pioneers over there. Yeah. Didn't work out, so we all moved back. Yeah. But over there, there were six Mennonite families. Mm -hmm. But besides that, there were Mexicans. So that's where I got mm -hmm. to know them very well. Yeah. And um, since we since we were only six families, and the Mexicans had to help us with everything. Mm, yeah. And there, I actually did play. Yeah, with, yeah, yeah with Mexican kids, so that was yeah. a great experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very oh. good experience. Cool. Um, so tell us a little bit about um, your uh, school background. Uh, yeah, tell school. us a little bit about school there in Hawaii. Okay, so it's a private school, it's a Kleingemeinde school, and they teach, they don't teach Spanish a lot. Well, nowadays I think they do more, but when I was in school, they did not. Mm, mm -hmm. Very little. We had a few books in grade one. We started with high German. Yeah. Grade two, we started with English. Yeah. Grade three, we started with a little bit of Spanish. Mm, mm -hmm. But I definitely regret that a lot. They could, after school, like after high school, I took four months of Spanish school, mm -hmm. but it was like with a teacher that hardly even spoke Spanish, also mm, from the community mm -hmm. there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, it yeah. did not help a lot. Yeah. I, I mostly learned my Spanish when I started working here. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. anyway, I did finish high school. That was, it's a private school from the it's CLE. I don't know if you know it. CLE. It's Swiss Mennonites from, from um, 
Pennsylvania, I think. Mm -hmm. That's where we have our supplies from. So high school, I did all of it in English. From grade five, six mm -hmm. on, most of the stuff was in English. And that was um, at uh, a school there, or is that like online? Or? No, there is a school there. Oh, yeah. a CLA There's school always, there in Hawaii. Yeah, you always walk to the yeah. walk to the road, or yellow bus picked us up. And yeah, 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 yeah. Brought us to school, so. So, yeah. And so was it common in the community to continue on to high school or was that something? Yeah, it is. Um, a lot of most people did start high school. There were some that only finished grade nine, which would be secundaria. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them, there were there was three levels of high school. It's a little different than the public public ones in the States, mm -hmm. but it would be vocational, general and academic. Yeah. So I went for the highest one. Not a lot of people did that. Yeah. After like now, I think there's a lot more people that did take it. Yeah. But yeah, it, is, it was quite normal. All of my older siblings have, did go to high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and so uh, you work for the Cruz Roja Mexicana uh, in, mm -hmm. Camp, uh, in Campo 101 mm -hmm. uh, in the, the Swift Colony. Um, how did you get connected with uh, the Cruz Roja? Mm -hmm. Okay, about five years ago, I'm not sure, five, six years ago, this building was built. So I'd always dreamt of being a doctor, so I figured mm. this was one step closer. Yeah. And you can't enter before you're 18, so... The year that I found out that I would like I would be turning 18 during taking the course, I entered. Mm, I had okay. some friends that had taken this one already mm. before from Kauai. So yeah. Besides, we always passed here, so it was always my dream to to yeah. go here as soon as I was older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, uh, what's your current level of certification, and how'd you get certified? Um, it would be, it's called TUM Basico, it's mm -hmm. an EMT basic in English, Yeah. and we did it over here in this um, delegacion, whatever, mm -hmm. it was a second generation, they have only passed two generations here mm -hmm. in 101, mm -hmm. the first one, where I told you some of my friends went, and the second one, that would be me, that's where I was in, mm -hmm. and it, it took 10 months, yeah. and then we were certified as as yeah. EMT basics. And what was a little bit of that process like? You did some book work and then what mm -hmm. was the... Yeah, they gave us a manual that mm -hmm. had over a thousand pages mm -hmm. and because I understood, uh, I did not understand Spanish very well at the time mm -hmm. I entered, so it was mm -hmm. extremely difficult for me. Yeah. I was always a straight A, straight a, straight a student in school, so mm -hmm. that it wasn't that hard, but the Spanish was very hard. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I ordered the same book in English and then mm -hmm. we had to read that book yeah. and we had to do practices. Yeah. Every weekend, some uh, teórico and some practice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ten months, and then we had to go to Chihuahua mm -hmm. to write the final exam. And yeah, we were done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what did what did the 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 practicum part of that look like? Like it was they made it very special for us. Mm -hmm. They had someone from Mexico City train mm -hmm. some of their other paramedics here mm -hmm. how to make wounds. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. had a lot of real people with mm. wounds that looked very real yeah, yeah and yeah, yeah. they they gave us drills like you have 10 minutes to get this patient um to the hospital or whatever yeah to the ambulance so it was mm -hmm. very real it was not yeah. just in the da behind a desk a teacher explaining how you would do it yeah yeah, yeah. you had a lot of hands-on yeah, uh, the adrenaline went rushing just like if yeah if you went on a real call so yeah absolutely so we had that a lot that if it was trauma they would put them in vehicles put wounds on them. If it was sick people, they would ask them to pretend a lot so that they that was w much more real for us. So mm, yeah. I'm very grateful for yeah. that. If it hadn't been for that, um, I don't think it would have, the school would have helped mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. um, so here at the station, what are your primary responsibilities? Um, I was a volunteer until beginning of this year, and then I started working here full time. Mm -hmm. And um, I drive, I drive the ambulance, like I have my okay. own ambulance that I have to take care of, mm -hmm. and when there's a call, we divide it, like I go, my partner goes, I go, my partner goes, mm -hmm. in the night we always go together, Yeah. so I have to take care of that of that um, mm -hmm. unit, I have to clean mm -hmm. it, keep it clean, check the air and the tires and the oil and everything, so that mm -hmm. was quite new for me, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I have to be ready to go on call by myself. If I do yep. need help, he is, if it's a critical case, mm -hmm. he does help me. Yeah. So, but yeah, besides yeah, yeah. that, just minor cases, I have to be ready to go alone. Mm -hmm. And what kind of calls do you typically get? Um, a lot more clinic, uh, clinical cases than traumatic cases. Mm -hmm. um, I would say a lot with heart problems, mm -hmm. chest pains, um, some with difficulty breathing, some with um, 
epoch, how do you call it? Um, uh, it's chronically, I'm not sure how it's in English, but chronically uh, lung, lung diseases like bronchitis. Oh, okay, smoking. yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, a lot yeah. of lung, lung diseases, a lot of stomach pains, like yeah. that we were not sure what's going on. Yeah. And I have been in very few um, cases with trauma. It's, mm, it's mm -hmm. mostly clinical ones. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so, um, primarily, like going, checking, and seeing, um, and then, in, in how many cases out of those do you end up doing transfers to, let's say, like uh, Cuauhtémoc or Chihuahua? Mm -hmm. Chihuahua, it's very little. Mm -hmm. um, very few that we do, maybe a few a month. To Cuauhtémoc, it's, it's a whole lot. We, there are some cases where it's they're having a, a nervous breakdown how should i say yeah for sure something like that or it's just mm -hmm. a minor case and we can treat it we treat it there mm -hmm. and while they have to sign sign a paper that they're okay with with not being transferred or some of them don't want to be transferred mm -hmm. i would say maybe maybe 20 percent that we that we just treat in the home and, mm -hmm. and the others that we do transfer they're go to yeah. yeah yeah and um so being um, multilingual is an asset um, in your line of work. Uh, what language do you do most of your interactions in here at work? It's definitely an asset. It's, I do most, mostly in Spanish mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. uh, the training I had in Spanish, the, my coworkers are mostly Spanish. Yeah. And most of the patients we treat are Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I have to speak mostly Spanish. Mostly right? Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so you said uh, the majority of people um, are, are Mexican, Spanish-speaking people. Um, what kind of interactions do you have with people from Mennonite communities? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we do transport some of them, like oh, they're just like everybody else, they get mm -hmm. sick too. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I can connect with them much better. Yeah, for sure. Like if they are having, just recently I was on a call where the, where the lady asked me, is there hope for my sickness? Mm, mm -hmm. So I can't I can't answer that because I don't know what kind of sickness she has. Yeah. But in Spanish, I would not I would not know what to do. I would just mm -hmm. sit there awkwardly, mm -hmm. try mm -hmm. to utter a few words mm -hmm. of comfort. But if it's a if it's a German speaking, I feel mm -hmm. like I can I can talk to them much mm -hmm. better. Yeah, absolutely. Or I had a lady with a small girl that was having um, like seizures, mm -hmm. and she was really worried. And it's much easier to communicate yeah. to them in German than it is in Spanish. I really, really yeah. hope I get that good at Spanish someday because yeah, absolutely. I have coworkers mm -hmm. that are, very, are able to do it very well in Spanish and yeah. it's definitely my goal. Yeah, 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 yeah. How do you feel that your, your Spanish has improved um, since working here at the station and then volunteering before that with uh, the Cruz Roja? It has improved drastically. I mm -hmm. honestly learned most of it when I was taking the course. Mm -hmm. Like I was able to get along with with Mexicans, with Spanish-speaking people, mm -hmm. but that I would be able to have uh, a conversation with them mm -hmm. would be much more since I entered here. It's, yeah, it's improved absolutely. drastically. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and so, when the calls come in here, do they come directly to you or to a dispatch or? We have a cell phone number, a local cell mm -hmm. phone number that most of the people around here have. That's yeah. mostly how they call us. But mm -hmm. they also, if they do call 911, mm -hmm. it go. It takes much, much longer. At first. Mm -hmm. It goes mm -hmm. through, um, I don't know how many, I think it goes directly to Mexico City, if I'm correct. So they oh, first have okay. to like, make calls till Cuauhtémoc, well, until here. It takes much longer. And then they kind of transfer them yeah. to the local mm -hmm. they, they, location. They tell them their location, then they can send the nearest unit but it takes mm -hmm. much much longer than if they just we have a local yeah. cell phone number almost everybody around here has it yeah for sure if they don't if they don't have it a friend or a family has it mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. and um so getting getting those calls here um and taking them in spanish i'm sure at the beginning that was very stressful yes um, it, i'm just starting to take them mm, like mm -hmm. i haven't taken them for very long mm -hmm. but i do i do take them and often it is at night so then for sure so then I'm asleep and I, when I have, when I answer the phone, I just, okay, now you got to understand this in Spanish and it, mm -hmm. it's very difficult just waking out. No, yeah, you got to think and answer and, and speak in Spanish, Yeah, but it has gotten much easier. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then, um, when you're on shift, you kind of the go-to person for anybody who calls in, uh, like a German speaking person. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, like most people, most German people do speak Spanish mm-hmm. enough to like tell us what they need. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But yeah, if, yeah. if, if it is a lady mm-hmm. that does not speak Spanish very mm-hmm. well, there has been cases where they just bring us the cell phone and then we talk to them. And, and oh, okay, German. yeah, yeah, yeah for we sure. have a cell phone here where they. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and so, what have your interactions been like here at work um, with, uh, like you were saying, particularly women in traditional communities who? Mm-hmm speak only German. Yeah, I, I would say most of the German people that I have transported, mm-hmm. I, I only work here two days a week, so it yeah. could be different for the rest of the days. Yeah. But most of them have been women. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe they ask me, They I don't know if they set it up that way, but um, I really enjoy it because I can talk to them mm-hmm. and I feel like I relate to them more more than I would. Yeah. Um, um, that's about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Absolutely. They are, most of them are more traditional than, than mm-hmm. what I've been used to. Yeah. So I do feel awkward. I, yeah. I sometimes mm-hmm. say I feel, I feel more awkward to the traditional Mennonites than to mm-hmm. Mexicans. Mm-hmm. And they've also said mm-hmm. to me, sometimes when I'm here, they say you're more Mexican than you are Mennonite. Mm. So, yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. So I do not know what uh-huh. to talk to them sometimes, yeah. but it is, it's an uh, no, uh, uh-huh. advantage that you speak their language. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so when, when they say here at the station, like, oh, being being more Mexican than Mennonite, what are some of those things that they say, oh, for this reason? like I guess it's because of the traditions, because mm-hmm. I don't hold, well, basically nobody here, none of the women here, they hold the traditions. But. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And how many, how many Mennonite women work here at this particular station? Oh, oh wow. That are trained basics, I would say it'd be like around 20. Oh, okay, yeah. And then we have mm-hmm. uh, another group. They're called damas, like mm. ladies, yeah. Red Cross ladies. They don't go in the ambulance, but they do. Like they do a, a lot of work. Yeah. Um, they cl- sometimes they clean here, mm-hmm. but when there's like stuff coming in, like when the earthquake was in Mexico, yeah, they organized all that. They often make our banquets. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure what they all do, but they do. Mm-hmm. They do a great job. Yeah. And so a lot of the organization around like disaster relief, or if there's something mm-hmm. big happening, they. They help. Yeah, yeah, they help a lot. Yeah, no, that's wonderful. Um, so uh, after the the earthquake uh, happened in Mexico City and then also in Oaxaca, mm-hmm. um, how much were you guys involved here? What was that like? Excuse me. Um, they were. They did ask us if we wanted to go. Mm-hmm. So there was a chance for some of us to go. Mm-hmm. I had just barely returned from Houston, so I, I was sure. not ready to. Mm-hmm. to just jump on a plane and go again. Yeah. But they did, what we mostly did here, we had, we opened a centro de acopio. So mm-hmm. everybody brought things. Like a donation center. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, a donation mm-hmm. center. So they donated ex- a lot, a lot of things. So we have worked weeks with that, I think. Mm-hmm. A mm-hmm. week, every day. Yeah. So we asked all of our volunteers to come in, help with that. They packed yeah. it. And then we, they rented a semi and some of the people from here flew to Mexico City and then mm-hmm. to Chiapas mm-hmm. to be there to receive the donations and help them yeah. um, spread them out there. Yeah, absolutely. So that's, that's one major thing that we did here. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you mentioned um, going to Houston, you were there um, to help uh, after Hurricane Harvey. Um, talk a little bit about that. Uh, we left on what was it, August 31 and return on September 16 or 15 I'm not sure mm, we're mm-hmm. gone about 15 days yeah so it's definitely been a life-changing experience mm, I wouldn't change mm-hmm, it for anything mm-hmm. and I would like to do more of that in the future yeah so yeah, what yeah, yeah. we did there um me and another worker from here he's actually I think he's downstairs right now I'm not sure he's mm, from Kauai's mm-hmm. as well oh okay yeah. so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So we, they asked us on a Sunday afternoon if we would be ready to go on Monday. Mm, mm-hmm. So the requirements were that we were speaking English and Spanish, yeah. that we had our papers in order, like papers that we could cross the border. Yeah. And um, we would have 15 days or more free. Yeah. So it was Sunday afternoon that they asked us, and Monday mm-hmm. morning we had to be ready to fly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was a whole hassle, packing and asking my boss for some time off, mm-hmm. because at the time mm-hmm. I still worked, I did not work here, I worked uh, at another office. Mm-hmm. And um, But they did delay the flight till Wednesday morning. Mm-hmm. So there was mm-hmm. like two days of just waiting and waiting and waiting, like we yeah. were waiting for our tickets, just sitting by our emails. Yeah. When the, once they told us the hours, we went to Chihuahua, we flew to 
We flew to Dallas and mm. from Dallas, no, we first flew to Mexico City and there mm -hmm. we met all the other ones from all over Mexico, every almost every state of Mexico. It was 33 of us. Mm. And yeah. then we flew yeah, to yeah, Dallas yeah. and then they transported us to Houston in vans because we could not fly directly to Houston at the time. Yeah, for sure. And then when I was entering Houston, I had, <clears throat> I had expected a whole disaster more like um i was very surprised it looked clean mm. you could definitely see that there had been damage like mm -hmm. um all kinds of furniture and mattresses and couches were thrown outside mm -hmm. but it was not the level that i expected like entering houston yeah, yeah if yeah, nobody yeah. had told me there had been a flood i don't think i would have noticed yeah yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. then we went to the center and um there's a Georgia R. Brown Convention Center. It's a very, mm -hmm. very large convention center. They had converted that into a shelter. So the first day on Monday, they said they had 10,000 people there. Oh, wow. Yeah, so yeah, it yeah. was extremely large. It was like a whole city in itself. Yeah. And by Wednesday, by the time we came there, they said it dropped down to 5,000 already. So lots of people just mm. came there for the scare, like, our house is going to flood. We need a place to go. Oh, And for by sure. Wednesday, they yeah, yeah, found yeah. out their houses were okay, or they had family and friends they can move yeah. in with, and then they moved back. Yeah. And by the, so my first week, I mostly helped there. Mm -hmm. I helped in the shelter. It was an extremely large shelter. Mm -hmm. It was divided into five sections. So there was sleeping areas, there was eating areas, there was a medical area, a dentist area, transportation, there was a kids area. Um, almost everybody had a booth there, like legal booths, construction booths, advertising their, their um, businesses. Mm -hmm. There was cell phone booths. Um, about just about everything you can imagine. Yeah. So yeah, for yeah, some yeah. days I worked at the information booth. Mm -hmm. Um, every because the shelter was so very large, people did not know where to go. Yeah. So they would come to the information booth and they would ask like, "Hey, where's this? Where's this? Where's this?" Yeah. And yeah, that yeah, was yeah. very difficult because mm -hmm. some of them came crying and they said, "I have lost everything." Mm -hmm. So that was yeah. extremely difficult. First of all, I did not. Um, I'm not very familiar with the laws in the United States. Yeah. So there was this FEMA. Oh, no, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I did not. I never heard of that before. Kind of the, uh, the federal yeah. disaster relief. There yeah, you yeah, go. yeah. Uh -huh. So the Red Cross is like, it's independent. It does not work with the government. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of difficult, first mm -hmm. of all, because I did not know what FEMA was. Yeah. So yeah, everybody sure. was asking about their insurance and who would get them paid and and you're supposed to try to help them in a country where you had absolutely no oh, idea. Oh, yeah, yeah, for it. sure. And the Red Cross sure. cannot just, just give out money to everybody that yeah. asks. So we try to yeah, yeah, yeah. support them. There was a lot of clothes were mm -hmm. donated, food. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we offered them all of that free transportation, actually, for those few weeks that the shelter was open. Yeah. And, um, and then the second week, I worked in distribution. So then we had these herbs, they're like ambulances, but the back in the back there's a kitchen. Mm, yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. where I got to see a lot of the commu community. Until then I had been mm -hmm. stuck in the center, or it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. But then I got to see a lot more, and that was where I, I really got to know, like we always went to the affected areas and we brought them food. Yeah, and we yeah, met, yeah, yeah. I met a lot of Spanish speaking people, and mm, because mm -hmm. I am so white, mm, and mm -hmm. they were, most of them were not familiar with Mennonites. They yeah, didn't know sure. what Mennonites were. Yeah. So when I spoke to them in, in, <laughs> in, <laughs> in Spanish, without an accent, yeah. some of them just almost fell over backwards. And yeah. I remember that yeah, 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 some yeah. of them would, oh, a lot of them, hey, she speaks Spanish, come look at her, she's white and she speaks, she's born in Mexico. Yeah. And I know yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of workers would come to the window, there was a little window where it would pass them food and then yeah. they'd be like, oh, where were you born? How come you're so white? I, that's what I heard a lot. You're yeah. white, you speak Spanish. Yeah. You're white. And yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, they, yeah. I didn't take it offensively, but they were, they uh -huh. were definitely taken aback. Yeah, for sure. So Absolutely. that was a lot of fun. Like yeah. seeing yeah, yeah, them yeah. struggling with English and then just mm -hmm. speaking to them in in plain Spanish without yeah. an accent. Thing. Absolutely. Yeah. They're taking aback, and I had amazing, amazing. Like just if you just tell them that you were from Mexico, mm. there were a lot mm -hmm. of illegal immigrants. Yeah, for sure. They you would connect with them extremely much. There was also this one lady, quite hilarious. She she had heard of Mennonites because I think she she was a. I think she was an illegal immigrant there as well, mm, but she mm -hmm. had heard of Mennonites and um, all she had heard was they were starving. They, they, let the, they ate their children, they, they were starved and they had to cross a mountain to get to water. So she was a lady who already had 
I think three families living in her home. Mm, she did mm -hmm. not have drivers. She wasn't allowed to drive. Yeah. And she was trying to convince me with all her might to move there mm, because mm -hmm. she was absolutely certain Mennonites here in Mexico were starving. Oh yeah. And I yeah, tried yeah, to yeah. explain to her that it was a little different. She said, no, no, I've seen it on TV. Mennonites in Mexico are starving. After a while, I just told her, well, thank you. If I ever needed it, I would, I would yeah, come to yeah, 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 yeah. You've got a place there in Houston. Yeah, I've yeah. got a place there. <laughs> I don't remember where it was. No idea. Oh, well, they took yeah. me to so many places. But that yeah. was just so hilarious. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, after a while, I just didn't even argue with her because there was no point. And she had seen on TV that Mennonites here were, were starving. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So oh, she was. Ex she wanted my number, my email, everything. She was extremely helpful. I would. Yeah. I would not go. Go to waste here. Yeah. And uh, also, one day we went. We went with. Uh, we took the boxes to different places and just left them there, mm -hmm. and then they mm -hmm. would distribute them. Yeah. Other days we would distribute food, and I came in contact with a lot of people there. So mm -hmm. there were a lot of African Americans. Yeah. Which I have not seen a lot before that since. For sure. Around here we don't have yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah, if yeah, we yeah. go to El Paso, I see them. Yeah. But I'd never been in contact with them like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was so, so strange for me. Like mm -hmm. about every religion, Muslims, mm -hmm. Islam, everything you mm -hmm, can imagine, mm -hmm. uh, everything, Orthodox. Yeah. Every color of hair, every color of skin. Yeah. So that's yeah, something yeah, yeah. you do not see here. Like yeah. If absolutely. you grow up in a little Mennonite community, yeah. I had a lot to learn. I was yeah, yeah, yeah. taken aback very, very yeah. much. Yeah. Um, a lot of different languages, Mandarin, Chinese, I had not heard them before. Mm -hmm. And people from all over the world. Uh, there's hardly a place that I have not met people from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So that was very, very amazing. Mm -hmm. I was I was sad when I had to go. I would have liked to help longer. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Went yeah. home. <laughs> and so the, the whole um, delegation from Mexico was there for three weeks and then came back? Uh, yes. No, wait, wait. But there was, after two weeks, we were given a chance to come back after 15 days. Mm -hmm. So I had to come back because I had only asked for five days, uh, no, for 15 days off at work. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And I also had, uh, I'm a piano teacher, so I had piano students here waiting for me and different, yeah, for sure. different things. So I decided to go home, mm -hmm. but there were some that went to Puerto Rico after that, like oh, to help yeah, with Hurricane yeah. Irma. Yeah, so yeah, in yeah. total, they were gone over a month, I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, I would have had the chance to go there as well. But I did not know that until I was home. I decided it was time for me to go and come home. Yeah, for sure. I had been. <clears throat> and the rest, okay. I think, all came back after 15 days. Yeah. There were around, was it was it five maybe? That went to Puerto Rico. That went to Puerto, Puerto Rico. Rico. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there were some that had to go to straight to Mexico City mm -hmm. because of the earthquake there. Like, oh, so for some, sure. Some of the guys that were specially trained in um, rescue, mm -hmm. like, uh, I don't know what... They were called break. Mm, it's mm -hmm. rescue and yeah. for buildings that have collapsed. Yeah. So they were sent directly to Mexico to City. To Mexico City. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Um, and what kind of interactions did you guys have, um, like within the team? Like, the team. yeah. It was very interesting. I had to speak Spanish the almost the entire time because yeah. they did speak English, but like not on the level that you could um, communicate with them. For or sure. Like for yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. it was better in Spanish. Yeah. So, and even living with them for two weeks, it mm, was, I got okay. to know their uh, culture more. Yeah. yeah it yeah. was definitely an opening door. I mean, over mm -hmm. here, I, I always live, live with them, with mm -hmm. Spanish speaking people as well. Mm -hmm. But over there, I was, I was all alone. Mm -hmm. Or, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah I yeah, did yeah. not speak low German in over two weeks or about yeah. two weeks because the other yeah, guy yeah, that yeah. spoke low German was taken to another place, um, another city about four hours away. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. was literally left there, a yeah, white yeah, yeah, Spanish yeah. speaking person among <laughs> Spanish speaking yeah. people in, yeah, yeah, yeah. in an English country. So yeah. almost always when there were, they needed a translation, mm -hmm. they would uh, ask me. Yeah. Like, there was yeah, all these sure. bosses, um, Trained people, but when it came to Spanish speaking people, they just kind of, mm -hmm. I mean, English speaking people, they just kind of pushed me to the front. Hey, yeah, you for translate, sure. you take this. For sure. So, and but I got to know them very well. Like, yeah. we became very close friends. I'm still in contact with them. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, some yeah. of us re met um, at the, in November at a convention, a Red Cross convention. Oh, yeah. In San Luis oh, Potosi. Nice. So, about oh, nice. 10 of us. Yeah, we met there, so it was great seeing them again. I feel really close to them. Yeah, no, that's wonderful. And we made, we became very close friends. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, 
So what other projects um, has uh, the Campo 101 delegation worked on um, with the Cruz Roja Mexicana on, an, on a national level, in national addition level. to the, the earthquake relief? Okay. Um, especially the earth, earthquake relief mm -hmm, in Mexico mm -hmm. City. There was also the time when there was a hurricane in Haiti, mm, yeah. quite, quite a while ago already. Yeah. I know that there was um, one one guy that went went to help there mm, through the mm -hmm. Red Cross. Yeah, that was from here. That was from here from yeah. this delegation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, mm, but besides mm -hmm, that, I'm mm -hmm. not very familiar with this because I have not been here for very long. For sure. I know yeah, that yeah. they have done uh, they have interactions mm -hmm. with the Red Cross mm -hmm. on a national level, mm -hmm. but I I can't say that for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. That would be somebody who's been here longer would know that would know that a lot better. Mm -hmm. Something that I've noticed is that, um, like, you'll be driving out on the highway, and then there'll be people who are volunteering for the Red Cross who are collecting money. And a lot of times, like, I'll see, like, Mennonite churches or schools. Like, in what ways do, do organizations from the Mennonite community um, s help support the, the Cruz Roja here? Um, they're definitely very generous. Um, the collecting money... Mm -hmm. I think it's only a few months per year that we do that. Mm, mm -hmm. But a lot of them have a little donation box yeah. that you yeah, can yeah, yeah. where you can put the money in. Yeah. And I know a lot of a lot of the people from around here have personally invested a lot mm, mm -hmm. into building this because it's yeah. it's built from donations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um uh, that, I think that's about it. They yeah. they're very generous. Yeah. They're they're very thankful. They would sometimes on Christmas, they would bring us cards, chocolates, thank us for mm. our work. Yeah, 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 yeah. I de we definitely feel very supported by them. Yeah. The other yeah, day, yeah, also, yeah. a quite traditional Mennonite lady told me, I was quite taken aback, but she said mm -hmm. to me that, oh, oh, she said in German, how mm -hmm. great that, that German-speaking people are training, mm -hmm. uh, are mm -hmm. taking this training, because mm -hmm. it's it's so great that I can, mm -hmm. I can tell you this in low German. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was something that I I was surprised because I thought a lot of the traditional Mennonites they would more ha have like an attitude of, of especially women shouldn't mm, be we shouldn't mm -hmm. be taking this course. Yeah. But I find that it's that it's quite different because a lot of Mennonite ladies are taking this course. Mm, yeah. And she also yeah, said yeah, yeah. that, so I was I was very impressed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. So here um, around the community, I've seen some advertisements for a basic uh, paramedic certification class. Um, tell us a little bit about those courses, when they're offered, who takes those classes? Okay, they're open to everybody who is, there's some requirements, like you have mm -hmm. to be above 18. Mm -hmm. The course will be in Spanish, but mm -hmm. a lot of low German spe speaking people enter it. Mm -hmm. and. Um, you have to bring some certain documents. You have mm -hmm. to have um, secundaria mm, yeah. or high school to yeah. finish it. Yeah. But besides that, it's open to the public. Like yeah. everybody yeah, can yeah, come. Yeah. And we're trying to trying to invite everybody around here. So yeah. so yeah, that yeah, is yeah, very yeah. very multicultural because mm -hmm. um, there's always I would say about half and half. At least last year it was yeah. half and yeah, half, yeah, yeah, or yeah, even yeah. more Mennonites than than Spanish speaking people. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. And is that just here in 101, or is that also, um, there's a delegation down in Manitoba? Um. Yeah, okay, I think they're also offering one. Oh, okay, yeah. I think I have seen one for them as well, so maybe yeah. some of the posters you've seen uh -huh. is for that delegation. Uh -huh. But we only work with the one, like I only mm -hmm. work with the mm -hmm. one from over here. From your local, uh -huh. your local group. Yeah, okay. from our yeah. local group, so. Yeah, cool, wonderful. Let's see. Um, so you said that um, at least half and half, or maybe even more, um, Mennonites taking the courses um, than um, Spanish-speaking uh, people. Um, have you heard, um, like from the past, like what that was like, how that was different? Over here, since we're this is mostly a Mennonite organization, mm -hmm. there was um, I don't know when this opened. Like before, mm -hmm. around five years ago, this delegation was built. Mm -hmm. But before that, they just had a very small shed. Yeah. And then the first ones that the first ones that took the class, they were there were at least three that I know. They had to go to quote Pemo mm. to yeah. take it. So yeah. I remember one Spanish speaking teacher once told us that mm -hmm. it had felt like a breakthrough because mm, yeah. it was finally a, a German-speaking um, 
uh, community mm -hmm. that was opening their doors mm -hmm. and they were able to speak Spanish and low German and yeah. they trained as paramedics and then they had their, it was a little garage, they had the ambulance here. Mm -hmm. So those mm -hmm. were mostly, uh, I don't know, it was three, four, five German speaking people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that had the ambulance going over there. So. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. but lately, since we opened this, it's a lot, mm -hmm. it's both, I would say about half and half. Yeah, for sure. That there's that big shift between like, oh, maybe like 10, 15 years ago when those five people came uh -huh. in and then now, like, and they had to, open. I think they had to shift to Spanish a lot more. Oh, for sure. Like, be between them, they could always speak German, mm -hmm. keep talking German. And, mm -hmm. and, but now we have to, they, we have to speak Spanish. They, they, mm -hmm. there's a lot of them that complain if we speak too much no, German. Oh, for sure. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have to shift to Spanish a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so the, the primarily Spanish speaking people who work here at the delegation, are they, um, from this area or from Cuauhtémoc or? Yeah, they're mostly, well, some of them are mm -hmm. from Cuauhtémoc, but mm -hmm. there's also Rubio, mm -hmm. there's a yeah. few like mm -hmm. ra small ranches, mm -hmm. small villages, yeah. Spanish speaking. So mm -hmm. they're mostly from our area. And so it's interesting because they're kind of the Spanish speakers, maybe that, they're, we're growing up or having more contact with Mennonites than maybe somebody like from Cuauhtémoc or from, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. There's a, yeah. a lot of them actually understand are starting like the, the one that's worked here for five years. Mm -hmm. and they start to understand low German. Yeah, for sure. So they, yeah. they co understand the, the traditions and the community quite well. Yeah. They, they respect it very well. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see. Um, I'm wondering, um, so a, a couple weeks ago I sat in on um, a first aid class that was being offered um, at Steinreich um, okay. in Low German. Mm -hmm. um, how much of that happens here locally, like in Low German? Um, kind of the, the outreach or, or first aid courses okay. or... We have a, a person that is especially in charge of like, um, it's called external education. Mm, yeah. So they can, there's a lot, often there's like maybe companies, a school or somebody, mm -hmm. even a while ago it was the, the centrum. So where they, oh, um, for sure. Yeah. Where they the ask, the rehab center. Yeah. The rehab center. Yeah. 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 That asked for first aid classes. So currently before these days, we, we gave one in, in Ojo de la Yegua. Mm, yeah. For sure. And we gave one, uh, no, wait, we're going to give that one. We gave one in Campo 79. Yeah. We're planning to give one in Ojo de la Yegua and also mm -hmm. at Bible school. So they're mm -hmm. all in low German. Yeah. And we're also planning to have one here, one in low German and one in Spanish. If yeah. I'm right. So yeah, we yeah, do yeah, that yeah. a few times a year that we go. Mm -hmm. It's not uncommon that, that they would ask us, let's say this company, this, this cheese factory, especially they yeah. want their workers to have a basic first aid yeah. knowledge. So yeah, that's quite common for mm -hmm. us to go out and give those classes. Mm -hmm. And, um, so what has been your level of participation in those classes? Like, is that part of your responsibilities here um, like as a worker? It's, it's not my obligation, but mm, since mm -hmm. I'm, I'm part of, a, of the, um, uh, it's called capacitacion. So it's training and education. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Since I'm part of that and I really enjoyed, I do take, I do participate in the mm -hmm. first eight classes. Yeah. Um, I usually help with the practices. Mm -hmm. Um, there's always some some teaching like from a book and then there's yeah. practices so i don't mm -hmm. do the teaching they didn't ask me to but i do not i didn't feel ready yet mm -hmm. to the to do the teaching i just help with the practices yeah yeah the first eight classes mm -hmm. so and typically really how long do those run like it's a, a series of sessions that you go do or? it's 10 hours i believe mm -hmm. usually we divide it into two or three evenings okay for sure so it's around 10 hours yeah if i'm right yeah, yeah, yeah. something like that so five cool. hours per evening cool 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 um, so something that I'm wondering is that, um, in, in your lifetime, how have you seen attitudes and access, um, to, um, education, uh, change in the community? In the community. Mm -hmm. uh, college is one thing that was not offered to me. Mm. Um, I would, I would really like to go to college. That's yeah. one thing that I'm currently actually struggling with. Because my high school education, like my diploma, is not valid here in Mexico since it's from the states. Oh, for sure. So I have to get a, a high school in, in, uh, Span in Spanish. So mm. I'm currently trying mm -hmm. to get that. Yeah, for sure. And then I would be able to go to college, but that would be that would be in Chihuahua. Mm. 
Yeah, for sure. So I see that as quite difficult. I know mm -hmm. people for, here from the DARPA, for them, Chihuahua is closer. Mm -hmm. And they're much more familiar with that. I know there's quite a few mm -hmm. from Blumenau that, that, do yeah, go to, mm -hmm. that do go to the college in, in, uh, in Chihuahua. But from mm -hmm. Kauai's, nobody has ever gone there. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I do, I do struggle with that. Like, yeah. it's not something that's offered to me. Like, hey, you want to go to college? Or, yeah. I yeah, really, yeah. really have to fight for it if I'm going to yeah, want it. Absolutely. Yeah. But our our little colony, they did offer high school to everybody, um, which I know is not so common among traditional Mennonites. Yeah. And um, but I've seen a lot more people there. They're sending their kids to schools, like they change from the the old old colony schools. Mm -hmm. They change to other schools yeah. because they want their kids to have a better education. Yeah. So I've seen that a lot. For sure. That happening a lot. For sure. For sure. So for a lot of people, life in the campus is, has, has changed dramatically just in a short amount of time um, when it comes to cross-cultural interactions. Um, how are the interactions that you've had different from maybe the ones that your parents or your grandparents had? Um, my grand grandparents, so Hawaii was, was founded in, in 1948, much later than the campus around here. Mm -hmm. So my grandparents did uh, um, move here from Canada themselves. Mm -hmm. And I, they don't, they still speak English very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they had some tough times speaking Spanish. Mm. And my mom does not speak Spanish very well, but she sometimes had a lady that cleans for her or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She does get along with her. Mm -hmm. But I, I speak Spanish def, definitely better than my mom. Yeah. And uh, my dad, well, he gets along with his workers, but they're not very involved with Spanish people. Yeah, yeah, Should sure. I say, the workers, the people at the store, but besides mm -hmm. that, we, our family was, was not involved with Spanish speaking people. Yeah, for sure. I, I went mm -hmm. out and did that on my own mostly. Yeah, absolutely. My older sister's married over there in the community, and mm -hmm. uh, my brother, my older brother is still at home, but I, mm -hmm. I kind of, ventured out for myself and, yep. and learned Spanish and mm -hmm. and um, it's it's always interested me when I was little I remember I sometimes said to my mom that I was going to marry a Mexican <laughs> yeah 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 just to kind of to kind of threaten her see what she would say so yeah. they never did forbid it I mean they were just yeah. they took it as a joke but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but um, they were not very they did not interact a lot with them mm -hmm. so I'm I'm absolutely certain that I do interact with them a lot more a whole lot more than than my parents do yeah for sure and I do I do feel like I under I understand their culture much better yeah once you start living with them like away from home and you yeah. start living with Spanish speaking people yeah you kind of have to adapt their culture because you can't sit alone in one corner hey I'm raised by these Mennonite traditions I'm going to mm -hmm. keep them yeah, yeah so yeah. that's been a lot of fun like yeah. um, letting go of Mennonite mm -hmm. traditions and and just yeah. um, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. getting to know more more traditions of other cultures yeah so I really like that especially interacting with the Spanish speaking people yeah, 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 yeah. I enjoyed that a lot and what have been some of the um, some of the challenges associated with um, you know kind of breaking out on your own and and, and doing things um, very differently than um, very differently. most of the people in your community um especially not being able to speak Spanish mm -hmm. that would be one thing like I do not I do not speak Spanish very mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. and besides that I did mm -hmm. not I did not face a lot of challenges because yeah. from Kauai's there are also others that have taken this course yeah but I did go with um, some of these uh, Spanish speaking people to a convention for mm -hmm. about a week yeah so I was I was alone basically alone with them again yeah 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 and then you just have to you have to know get to know yourself yeah and um, it's quite different than what, what my parents would have brought me up to do. So. Yeah, for sure. So I think for them it would have been a new experience as well. Yeah. And then you're kind of challenged with, um, you know, this is something totally new and how, how do I go about this? Mm -hmm. You kind of feel like an outsider, right? Yeah, absolutely. I at least definitely felt yeah. how you feel like an outsider, yeah. kind of like the odd kid in high school. So Yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah. it's been a lot of fun. No. A whole lot of fun. That's awesome. Okay, um, so the name of this project is Rebels, Exiles, and Bridge Builders. Which of these words, if any, would you use to describe your cross-cultural interactions, um, and why? Um, bridge Builders, right? That would be like... 
mm-hmm. like building a bridge between the community. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say mediator. that uh-huh. from young, I've been very interested in, in the Mexican, in the culture, community, yeah. Yeah. especially when we, li- we lived in Veracruz. I think that's where my interest oh, sparked. Oh, for sure. Yeah, so yeah, there yeah. were, especially in the South, there were so, so many new cultures or, mm-hmm. or traditions to get yeah. to know. Yeah. So that's where my interest really sparked. Yeah. And when we came back, I've always been interested, like we gave, mm-hmm. when I was younger, there were some Bible school classes that they gave in the, in the villages, in the Spanish-speaking villages. Mm-hmm. Since young, I would like to go go along. Yeah. I'm definitely speaking more Spanish from an, at a younger age than my, my, older, my older sister would have. Yeah. Much, participated much more in, in Spanish-speaking things than, mm-hmm. than, in, than some others, or mm-hmm. siblings would have. Yeah. I would say bridge builder. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what do you think the cross-cultural interactions between communities will look like in the future? Um, honestly, I was thinking about this question for some time. Mm-hmm. Sometime, like, since I know the Mennonite history so much, mm-hmm. sometimes it scares me that the, that the same thing is going to be repeated here that happened in, in Russia. You know, they yeah. had to move from one place to another. Mm-hmm. And when war started, they were pushed outside because, you know, mm-hmm. they, were, they, ha- they, were so, they were so rich and they were speaking the other language mm-hmm. and they were blamed. Mm-hmm. And me and my dad, my dad loved, uh, loves Mennonite history as well. So we have yeah. sometimes discussed about that history yeah. repeats itself. Yeah. So someday something would happen if history would repeat itself here in Mexico as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. that's one, one di- very different way of looking at it. Yeah. But the other, the other way I look at it is, I think it's building. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. From what it has been, like the, the schools here in Blumenau and also the one here in um, 101. Mm-hmm. I did not attend them, but I know that they have a lot of Spanish-speaking kids there as well. Yeah. I yeah, helped yeah, them yeah. in Steinreich Stein Bible School with the kids. Mm-hmm. And also Spanish-speaking parents from, from Blumenau or wherever sent their kids there. Yeah. So it's much more open than it would have been, um, I'd say, 50 years ago. Yeah, for sure. They accept yeah. them. I would say they accept them a lot more. Also, mm-hmm. marriages between Mennonites and Mexicans mm-hmm. are much more common. Yeah. And I'm really glad for that because I do not like the the racist wall that's for sure. between yeah. between those two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I am I'm really hoping that it it um, mixes it mixes well. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That 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 especially that that racist wall wall breaks down more. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks so much for having this conversation. My pleasure.